Welcome to today's audio lecture. This lecture will focus on block formatting and business documents. More specifically, the lecture will provide an introduction to block formatting, and then we'll talk about some common business document types and how to use them most effectively. Let's begin with an introduction to block formatting. Block formatting describes the standard set of formatting practices used in business documents. It's designed to optimize readability while at the same time allowing writers to put as much information on a page or a screen as possible. Block formatting is typified by several different traits. They include, for instance, left aligned text with a ragged right margin. And if you don't know what some of these terms mean, just hold tight. I have some examples momentarily. Block formatting also features single or 1.15 times spacing. It includes full line breaks between paragraphs. And then it typically includes two kinds of optional formatting. These include headers and subheaders to signpost content to signal to the reader the structure or organization of a document. And we also oftentimes find bullet points or numbered lists in block formatted documents, which help uh, organize information for easy scanning. When we use block formatting effectively, we create visually appealing documents. Now, when I use the phrase visually appealing documents, I don't mean to suggest that one day our emails or cover letters will wind up in an art museum, far from it. Rather, the phrase visually appealing describes documents that look like they will be easy to read. And since convincing our audience to engage with our writing is one of the first and foremost challenges in business communication, it's incredibly important that we produce visually appealing documents. So what do these elements of block formatting look like in practice? Let's take a look. On this slide, we have an example of left justified text. You'll notice in this example that every normal line of text, that is every line that isn't a bulleted or numbered list, aligns directly with the left margin of the page. Even the first line of the paragraph is not indented. And that's a critical distinction. In block formatted text, we separate paragraphs with full line spaces. We do not use indentation to mark the beginning of a paragraph. On the right-hand side of the page, we see examples of a ragged right margin. Uh, a ragged right margin is a term that we use to distinguish the formatting of text in block formatted documents from justified text. Justified text is text in which the leftmost word in a line aligns with the left margin and the rightmost word in a line aligns with the right margin. You've probably seen justified text in newspapers and magazines which typically use this style of formatting. Now justified text is very clean looking. It's very square, it's very regular, it's very blocky, but ultimately justified text is harder to read than text with a ragged right margin. The reason for this is that in order to get those clean lines, in order to get the first and last word in a line to align with the left and right margin respectively, word processors have to introduce a regular spacing between words. And that irregular spacing trips up our brains as we read, and it slows us down. And so given that the purpose of block formatting is to maximize the speed with which our readers can navigate our documents, while also maximizing the amount of content that we can fit on a screen or a page, we want to use ragged right margins instead of justified text. Finally, we have examples of the other major elements of block formatting. First and most importantly, we have the single space text. This is a mandatory element of block formatting, though you may replace single space text 
with 1.15 time spaced text. Then you have the two optional elements of block formatting. First, you have headers and subheaders, which are used to help your reader quickly and easily identify the purpose of a given section or paragraph. They signpost the structure and content of your document. And next and finally, you have bulleted or numbered lists which you use to organize parallel pieces of information in a way that your reader can easily scan and navigate. Now let's move on to common business documents and how to use them effectively. The most common business documents are emails, formal letters, and memos. Let's begin by talking about how to format these different documents. Emails typically have to, from, date, and subject lines. They begin with a uh, formal or informal opening salutation, either dear so-and-so or hi so-and-so, and they can end with a formal or informal closing salutation, either sincerely so-and-so or all best so-and-so, something like that. Letters have a slightly different header. They begin with the date written out in full, then you include a line break, and then you indicate the recipient's name and address. You then open and close letters with formal salutations, dear recipient, sincerely sender. And finally, memos have to, from, date, and subject lines preceded by the word memorandum or memo, and they critically omit opening and closing salutations. In other words, memos look a lot like emails. They just have the word memo at the top and they do not include opening or closing salutations. Finally, let's talk about how to use all of these different document types effectively. Email is quite versatile in terms of its audience. You can send it from one person to another, or you can send it from one person to many. Uh, it is typically seen as informal. You can use it to communicate with it within your organization or outside of your organization. You want to limit the length of your email to a single screen either a computer screen or ideally a mobile device screen. So that means keeping it quite short. And oftentimes you can count on a quick response emails. With letters, you have a slightly more limited audience. Letters are most effective when you are communicating with just one individual. They are, however, seen as quite formal. So if you want to communicate in a formal capacity, you cannot beat the formal letter format. Uh, letters are most oftentimes used to communicate outside of your organization, though on rare instances you can use them for internal communication. Letters are at their best uh, when they are one to two pages in length. And perhaps the biggest drawback of letters is the fact that you cannot count on a speedy response. Your letter needs time to get to your recipient and your recipient's response needs time to get back 
to you if they are going to respond by letter. Finally, the virtues and vices of memos fall somewhere between those of email and letters. Like email, memos can be used to communicate with either one person alone or with a much larger group of individuals. Their level of formality falls somewhere between those of email and letters. Memos are most frequently used for internal communication, but they can on rare occasions be used to communicate externally. Memos can be quite short or they can be quite long. They are very versatile in that respect. And perhaps their biggest drawback is that they don't provide a ready means of response. So that brings us to the end of our audio lecture. Hopefully this audio lecture has given you a broad overview of block formatting and common business documents. Thank you for listening.